Hi everyone, I'm Sonia Trivedi, Communications Manager at Muro, and today we are at Muro Mood Global 2023. I met very interesting speakers, community members and EdTech enthusiasts and to, today in the morning I had the pleasure to attend the session of Arakhat Jodo Shalieva, Team Leader Quality Learning Ecosystems Program from UNESCO Institute for Lifelong Learning. Hi Arakhat, Hello. how are you doing today? Very good, thank you so much. Uh, Perfect. Uh, is it your first Moodle Mood? Yes, this is my first uh, Moodle Mood. Okay. And it is a pleasure to be here, to be honest. Yeah. Welcome. Very nice to see you today. Today you had a keynote speech on lifelong learning, past, present and future. Lifelong learning is really vast concept. Can you please unpack it a bit for our viewers? Like starting with the definition might be nice. Okay. Uh, uh, during my presentation, I highlighted a little bit about evolution of the concept of lifelong learning which started with a 1972 report uh, uh, by UNESCO uh, um, and it was called uh, Learning to Be. And um, in that, uh, lifelong education was considered to be one of the main or uh, master concept to uh, propose a different type of education systems for the societies and the con historical context of the 1970s and 1980s. And uh, if I want to highlight the concept itself, it uh, was about uh, how uh, education systems should go beyond basic education and capture learning and education that's happening prior to schooling, but also while uh, uh, learning in, the, in different kind of uh, spaces, such as uh, homes and uh, workplaces, and capture also adults who are not necessarily in, uh, enrolled in higher education. So it was very vast concept. The concept was uh, supposed to support the policymakers in designing new educational systems and education system policies as well. And uh, fast forward to the today, lifelong learning is considered as one of the uh, main or overarching principle of organizing learning and education and training for the member states of UNESCO, but also for many other organizations and uh, education providers. It uh, encompasses a learning throughout uh, one's life uh, that captures uh, from early childhood until the uh, and elderly people's learning after their retirement as well. But also it captures learning that happens uh, in the formal education settings. Uh, non-formal educational uh, training uh, programs, but also informal learning that uh, uh, individual learners are engaged in. I want to highlight also that it's about life-wide education or learning, which means that uh, learning about uh, different other matters or skills and developing competencies in the areas which are not necessarily just for employment. Great, really interesting. I really enjoyed your presentation today. And you kind of answered my second question, which is more about uh, past, present and future. Like how did the concept evolve over time? But you mentioned that you have researched that for quite some time, right? Well, UNESCO has been uh, working in the area of lifelong education from the conceptual perspective. And uh, since the adoption of uh, Sustainable Development Goals in 2015, for the next 15 years 20, about until 2030. Uh, the concept has evolved and the, that evolution of the concept is now reflected in the uh, goal uh, on education. Uh, before it was education, uh, the right to education was uh, limited mostly to the basic formal education or school or uh, vocational training or higher education. In this uh, educational goal this, uh, of the SDG, it highlights the creating the opportunities for uh, lifelong learning for all. So um, if I want to, uh, to highlight one more uh, matter here, uh, is about uh, at the moment UNESCO is really contributing to the articulation of this concept in the policies, uh, practices and uh, initiatives, as well as contributing in terms of knowledge base uh, on the, in the area of lifelong learning. So we are currently working with member states, um, but also other stakeholders, uh, which provide lifelong learning opportunities for many different social groups, as well as communities, uh, starting from uh, learning to design such policy 
come up with the laws, legal frameworks for that, uh, understanding how governance of such learning systems can actually happen, and what kind of finances, funding are necessary to put into it. Okay, and why is the concept important now and in the future? Well, uh, I think during my presentation I highlighted uh, the even uh, when the Forest report uh, uh, in 1972 was uh, published, uh, the um, the lifelong learning as a concept, master concept, was introduced to respond uh, to the challenges of that time, and uh, also to the challenges which were about to come as well. So in the current context, we have a lot of global challenges. We are living in the context of climate crisis that has an enormous impact on educational systems and learning opportunities as well. And at the same time, we have other issues such as um, the digitization of our society, economy, as well as workplaces and educational systems. And uh, technology's development is so fast. More advanced technologies are being uh, 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 adopted in the education system. For that, we need to continue learning all the time because otherwise I think it will be difficult for individuals to uh, catch up, to be honest, with the advancements that are happening in the, in the world. The thirdly, I think the um, important issue is around also um, the uh, population growth uh, in, on one hand, but uh, on the other hand, aging societies as well. Lifelong learning currently is also considered as one of the important concepts in which in, in some parts of the world when uh, youth, uh, children are not getting uh, access to basic education, they have to have second chance to learn. So you ha uh, member states have to actually contribute to uh, the uh, creation of these opportunities for those who didn't have chances uh, when they were at the age where, uh, when they were supposed to go to schools. At the same time, as I said, workplaces are um, changing. The demands for different kinds of skills are changing. And uh, uh, that requires also learning all the time on different kind of uh, about different kinds of tools and the attitudes to be developed, values to be developed, and competences to be developed. For the countries which has elderly or aging population, the, the importance of lifelong learning is not just for employment purposes. It's also about um, contributing to active aging as well, so that active, healthy aging of their population too. So in general, I think uh, it is uh, required for many other reasons, and lifelong learning is, is, as I said, the master concept, can contribute to our uh, efforts to make learning as accessible, affordable, quality, and for all. Absolutely, I totally agree with you. Going back to UNESCO's work in the area, you mentioned to me that you have a very interesting lifelong learning initiative going on. Would you like to share more about it? Uh, we uh, started using um, online platform for our capacity building um, uh, efforts. Uh, uh, during COVID time, as you uh, know, that majority of us were in the lockdown uh, and we couldn't really reach out and uh, continue our work as uh, business as usual. So we had to identify opportunities and uh, tools that helps us uh, to continue working in the area of capacity building for our member states in, uh, on lifelong learning. So we came up with the uh, training platform with, uh, and that is being tested in 2021. Uh, very recently we launched it officially as well, which helps us uh, um, to continue our capacity building using digital tools or, and strengthening the uh, opportunities or the creation of opportunities for those who may not necessarily have uh, either time or um, uh, means to attend uh, or uh, the face-to-face -face training. Uh, in addition to that, we are also um, increasing this option for multilingual uh, training for the policymakers and the practitioners and providers because tools, digital tools in the current context, uh, some of this uh, definitely allows to expand such learning opportunities. And I think our platform, uh, which is based on Moodle, 
uh, as well, uh, is, has been tested and uh, is being tested at the moment as well. We are organizing different kind of modalities of uh, training, starting from self-learning to community of practice, to instructor-led uh, courses, which are long-term. Uh, and then we have also short-term workshops as well. So this is one of the uh, great examples that we actually can refer to how open access uh, platforms such as model could uh, contribute to outreach of the capacity of the institute such as ours uh, in terms of um, uh, meeting our goals as well as contributing to sustainable development goals in general. Great, and I guess people can learn more about it on your website? Yes, uh, if anyone is interested, please, I would uh, encourage you to visit our website. Uh, of UNESCO Institute for Lifelong Learning. And uh, I just want to take this opportunity also to uh, invite all of you to participate in our uh, campaign, uh, which is called I am hashtag I am uh, a lifelong learner. And by uh, telling us about wh why do you think you are a lifelong learner? Brilliant. I'm sure people who are watching right now would be willing to participate. But coming back to our interview, I have a little bit more to ask you, if you don't mind. One important point that uh, came to me during your presentation is the role of educators as lifelong learners. Could you please elaborate a bit more about it? How is it evolving? Yes, uh, educators who are mean uh, uh, people, who contribute enormously to the process of learning, as well as teaching yeah. and education, they need to become themselves as lifelong learners because um, of many reasons. And one of the main reasons I, I want to highlight is that the, the, uh, there is a technology development and the application of these technologies in education. And this requires uh, um, educators to be up to date about such uh, developments, but also become more critical users of tools and um, creative users of uh, such tools, but also creative actors. They have to engage with these tools as agents, active agents, not passive recipients. And I think uh, educators' role also is changing because of the uh, democratization of knowledge as well. Before, educators' role was more authorita authoritative because they, ha they had uh, all the knowledge with themselves and the learners were uh, uh, expected to actually um, rely on the knowledge which teachers and the textbooks had. Uh, in the current context, uh, it is uh, with one click, uh, the uh, learner can actually access some of this information uh, very easily. So the role of the educators is changing now from having all this knowledge and supporting the, uh, having all this information at hand and providing that to the learners, now uh, becoming more facilitators of the learning process as well. And at the same time, I want to highlight that despite the fact that we uh, see a lot of benefits of technologies uh, used uh, in education, we need to be aware that uh, educators' role will remain as an important uh, uh, um, people in the process of education as well as learning. Why? Because we need to consider technology will, is not a silver bullet, it's not going to solve those problems, all the problems. And uh, we, in addition to technology, we need human interaction. And educators are the ones who are going to uh, provide such support for the learners who require such uh, uh, facilitation as well as help in their process of uh, learning as well. And I think last I want to highlight is that technological tools uh, of different types uh, should be available for teachers and the core, of course with quality, uh, relevance, as well as um, accessible, accessible because of the uh, importance of these tools to support the work of the teachers rather than uh, limit their uh, teaching role. I, th I think we are uh, looking at the technology as a complementary means and yeah. tools rather than the placement of the teachers from the education process. Absolutely. Lastly, I want to ask you to take a brief look into the future and if you can share your perspective and also the vision of the Institute about lifelong learning. So how do you see lifelong learning evolving uh, in the next years? 
Well, uh, we are still, uh, I must say, we are still um, in the process of development of lifelong learning in concrete terms. Uh, we, we are currently working in the area of recognition, validation of accreditation, accreditation of learning, for example, which is still uh, at, at the uh, initial stage of uh, understanding and um, uh, having some examples, concrete examples for uh, the stakeholders to use. I think lifelong learning, as we uh, promote as the learning anytime, anywhere, irrespective of age and social class and uh, languages and uh, many other social and individual factors, and being available uh, through mod different modalities like formal training and non-formal education and informal learning, then we need to capture all of this by uh, developing further lifelong learning in terms of different tools, different understandings, crit critiques as well, and uh, also developing different versions of uh, lifelong learning from, um, uh, let's say, from the perspective of uh, social benefits of lifelong learning, and uh, uh, in terms of, uh, what I said, the economics of lifelong learning, financial uh, part of the uh, lifelong learning uh, systems development, and also uh, from the perspective of uh, educators as well. Who are those educators who are going to support such a, a process of lifelong learning? In addition to that, um, lifelong learning is happening uh, in, uh, in many places, which we need to capture as well. And I think this uh, capturing is required by uh, the researchers as well, by those who are providing such services and uh, generating cases which are working well for some of the groups and uh, testing them out uh, and scaling it is uh, still uh, uh, one of the main uh, challenges of lifelong learning, I, 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 I think. Thank you very much, Rahat. I learned so much from you today, so thank you for your time. Not surprisingly, lifelong learning is a theme of this conference as well, so your participation was really valued. I wish you all the best uh, here at Moodle Mood and all the best with your work. And thanks again. Thank you so much.